This video talks about how to conduct a portmanteau test for detecting arch effects in residuals. Like in a standard F-test, you have to specify for how many legs you would like to test for autocorrelation. Let's call the leg length M and denote M to be equal or larger than 1. So the first thing you do is you need to determine the empirical autocorrelation of squared residuals, which I call rho hat i, where the leg is denoted by the i. So you do so up to leg length m, so meaning mathematically you determine that empirical autocorrelation as follows, where epsilon bar to the power of 2 is the sample mean of the squared residuals. Now second, your H0 hypothesis is that there is no statistical evidence for an autocorrelation in the squared residuals. That means mathematically that H0 reads as follows. The alternative hypothesis is that there is some evidence that, or there is sufficient evidence, that there is at least autocorrelation for some of the lags. So conceptually that means that the alternative hypothesis would be that rho i is not equal to zero for some i element 1 to m. Now next, you have to compute the test statistic with the empirical data that you have. So the corresponding test statistic will be denoted as q of m and it equals the following expression. Now, when you look at that expression of Qm, you will notice that it adds up the empirical squared autocorrelations. The test does therefore check whether the sum of all squared autocorrelations up to le length m are large enough to be not consistent anymore with the H0 hypothesis of no autocorrelation. And next, if the H0 was correct, then Q of M would follow a chi-square distribution with M degrees of freedom. Such a distribution is denoted as follows. Now therefore, let's say you want 95% certainty. So you would choose a 95% significance level and a 5% type 1 error probability. In that case, you reject H0 if the realized value of Q of M is larger than the 95th percentile of the chi-square distribution with M degrees of freedom. Now we can formalize that as follows. Let alpha element 0, 1 to be the magnitude of the type 1 error and let 100 times 1 minus alpha be the respective confidence level. Now you reject H0 at a 100 times 1 minus alpha confidence level if the following relationship holds. Now otherwise you fail to reject H0. That decision rule is equivalent to rejecting H0 if the respective p-value is smaller than the alpha.